Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome to the channel Bookables. Today I am here to do another anticipated releases video. So I do a lot of these every year. I just did one a few months ago where I talked about my most anticipated reads for the entire year of 2024, but I like to break it down into seasons. A lot I miss, there's some I forget about, there's some new ones that come up. So today we're doing my spring one. So in spring, the months for that I'm going to talk about today are March, April, and May. So the these are three months that I'm talking about the releases I'm most excited for and honestly there's not a ton I don't know if maybe I'm just not looking or maybe there's not a lot that are just catching my eye but I'm gonna share with you the ones I am really excited for up starting off in March I have Woman of Good Fortune by Sophie Wang coming out on March 5th this is a brand new one I found and I was like this sounds amazing and basically the tagline says set against a high society Shanghai wedding a heartfelt funny dazzling novel about a reluctant bride and her two best friends each with their own motives and fed up with the way society treats women who forge a plan to steal the gift money on the big day so if you've read books or seen things um, a lot of times with um Asian cultures in particularly, they get a lot of money on their wedding day, like a lot. And so I'm guessing this bride that's probably just marrying for this reason and her two friends are like, you know, what? we're sick of it. We're going to steal the money. And I'm like, I really want to read it. I want to check it out. I want to see. It's probably going to be a lot of humor, but a lot of insight as well. And it sounds amazing. I have a thriller and that is Murder Road by Simone St. James. I have read several of her books before and really enjoy them. This is her newest release. And this is a young couple that finds themselves haunted by a string of gruesome murders committed on this old deserted road. So this takes place in 1995. They're, it's about a couple they take a wrong turn they end up on this road they see somebody that's struggling so they pick them up and they see this person starting to bleed and so before they can even get to the hospital this person died uh, and then they take the person to the hospital and then that person dies so now they're like crap we took a wrong turn which is like a horrible movie anyway and then they had somebody die in their back seat so now they're like at front of a murder investigation and they learn that this road that they were on has a whole bunch of murders that has happened and nobody knows so they're like caught right up in the middle of it and it sounds interesting and if you don't know Simone St. James she always kind of weaves some paranormal aspects into it as well so I'm interested in regards to that next up we have heavily never after by Lynn Pager coming out March 12th I've read several of her books before this is her newest adult romance one and this is about you know when you're at a wedding and they say you know speak now or forever hold your peace there's this guy that gets hired to stand up and be like I object to this wedding and that is his literal job so basically it starts off with Sophie who learns that her fiance has cheated yet again and she wants to break off the wedding but somehow she can't and then she hires this guy um what's his name his name is um, Max to do so and then they start to work together she's like I want to do this sounds interesting who wouldn't want to do this and basically it says the groom-to-be hires Sophie to object to this new wedding and the fiance is the woman who broke Max's heart who got him into this whole shindig if you will. So it sounds really funny kind of maybe like satire with romance and I really enjoy Lynn Painter's romances so all as always with all these I'm excited to read it. And that's all I have for March, like only three, which is a bummer. April is a very big month, honestly, so I'm very excited for that. We have The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. This is kind of her sequel slash companion novel to The Cheat Sheet, which I have read. So this book follows um, Nora and Derek. It says college exes break all the rules when they reunite years later in this enemies to lovers second chance um, novel. And this is like an NFL. If you don't know, Sarah Adams writes a lot of clean romances. I love them. They're just ooey gooey adorable romances that I eat up like candy. Then we have Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez coming out April 2nd. I have read all of her books. Love them. This is about a guy named Justin who has a curse and thanks to Reddit thread it's all over the internet. So basically every woman he goes on a date with to find Every woman he goes on to date finds their soulmate the second they break up. It's like that Dane Cook, I think it was Jessica Alba movie where every time he dates somebody, the next person that they find, she it's their soulmate. So it's kind of like that movie. And Emma, who I think is her or she, I think she has the same like kind of curse or something like that, if you will. And so they decide to come up with a plan. They'll date each other and break up. Their curses will cancel each other's out and they'll go on to find their love of their life. It's a bonkers idea and it just might work. It's supposed to be a quick fling just for the summer, but when 
Um, Emma's toxic mother shows up and Justin has to assume guardian of his three siblings. They're suddenly navigating a lot more they expecting, excluding catching feelings for each other. What what if this time fate has actually brought them, brought the perfect pair together? So it sounds amazing. I love Abby Jimenez and we all know this. Then we have a YA book that I'm really excited about. It's called, it's called The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. She wrote the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, which I really love. This one is about 18 year old Belle has lived her life in the shadow of her mom's mysterious disappearances. 16 years ago, her mom disappeared. Nobody knows where she went. It was kind of like in the middle of the night, if you will. But then the case is dragged, and Belle's just kind of wishing everybody would move on. But then it gets dragged up again because there's a documentary that's gonna happen about it. So now it's getting resurfaced, if you will. Um, and then the impossible happens. Rachel Price appears again. and life will never be the same again so it's kind of got like a gone girl aspect to it but why a so i'm hoping it'll be really good whereas we have emily henry's newest book funny story coming out on april 23rd i've read all of emily henry's romance books love and adore her she is hyped up with good reason i have given all of her books the time out of time i loved her one last year happy place is my favorite by her i'm excited for this one so this one's got an interesting presence who's about it's about a character named Daphne who loves the way that Peter tells their love story. It's her fiance. He always tells, you know, they were meant to be. It says he was really good at telling it right up until the moment he realized he was actually in love with his childhood best friend Petra instead of Daphne. So <laughs> that's awkward. And so now she is in her fiance's hometown, Waning Bay, Michigan, because that's kind of where they were going to start their life, and she has nowhere else to go. And who? does Petra run into, who does Daphne run into, but Petra's ex-flame who got left as well when um, Daphne's fiance and Petra realized they had feelings for each other. So Daphne and his name is Miles are like, you know what, we both got screwed up, man. We're screwed up. Let's just move in together, try to make the best of the situation, and you can guess what's going to happen. It says that the roommates mainly avoid one another until one day while drowning their sorrows, they form a tenuous friendship and plan. If said plan involves posing deliberately misleading photos of their summer adventures together, well, who could blame them? I don't. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be an interesting time, a little bit more romantic maybe than our last one. I don't know. And then lastly, in April, I have Old Flames and New Fortunes by Sarah Hoggle coming out April 25th. She writes kind of a lot of cleaner romances, kind of just hallmarky, I guess you could say, but I enjoy them. And this is Old Flame, a small magical town tucked away in rural Ohio. Moonville is the perfect place for Flora, for a, um, a florist, um, Romina to expand her shop where she uses the language of flowers to help the hopeful manifest their love lives. And so, um, I think when the shop's potential financer shares news of his wedding, she jumps on opportunity to discuss buying the business. And what starts as an innocent misleading becomes a week long fake dating scheme. Okay. So fake dating, I'm guessing with her trying to buy this flower shop and the guy that's financing it and they decide to fake date. I don't know. I love fake dating. So we'll see. And lastly, we have the month of May where we have a few. First up, Christina Lawrence's new book, The Paradise Problem, coming out May 14th. And this one I really don't know anything about. It's about Anna, who thought she was marrying Liam West. Um, okay, this is about Anna, who thought she was marrying Liam for access to subsidized family housing while at UCLA. She also thought she signed divorce papers when the graduation caps were tossed, and they both went on their merry way. So they just really got married for, like, housing fees and all that stuff, which, I mean nobody's blaming anybody for that at this day and age. And then three years later, she's a starving artist living paycheck to paycheck, um, while Wes is a Stanford professor. Um, and then he may be one of four heirs to the Western Foods conglomerate, but he has little interest. Um, he is, however, interested in the $100 million inheritance. There's just one catch. I bet you that's going to be marriage. Um, yep, Liam won't see a penny till he's been happily married for five years. And then, you know, <laughs> he realizes that he actually has been married. So he kind of contacts um, Anna and, you know, things happen from there. So it's going to be an interesting book. Christina Lauren's books, I haven't loved any of their newest ones for quite some time. So I am skeptical of this one, but I'm also hopefully optimistic. <laughs> we have Savor It by Tara DeWitt coming out on May 21st. I read um, my first book by Tara DeWitt last year called Funny Feelings and loved it so I'm excited for this one. This is about Sage who's lived in Oregon um, and she's learned to love her small world. She has 
a hobby farm i would love to have a hobby farm and her friendships but when her five-year-old relationship ends and her ex town golden her ex town golden boy and suddenly gets engaged she needs a win something that will convince everyone to stop pitying her all the time and then um there's a competition called the festival of spoons i don't know then we have fisher who's hot chef, chef who's a hot shot who is a hot shot i could say that word chef in new york Ela struck sage will improve fisher's images in the eyes of the town and remove roadblocks he is facing with the restaurant i'm guessing so a bit of a restaurant there and sage will be partner and sage will be partners with her for the competition but their pack quickly turns into steamy rendezvous emotional wounds begin to heal interesting and then the last one i have is another thriller horror if you will and that is the house that horror built by christina lauren that is the trend this year there is a lot of books that are about either making of horror movies behind the scenes of horror movies and i am interested in that as a person that doesn't watch any scary movies only the previews and then i watch the recap on found flicks I'm interested in this. So this is about Harry, who has always loved horror movies. So um, she took a job cleaning house for a famous horror movie director, Javier. Um, and basically, it's filled with terrifying props and costumes. And he also values discretion. And Harry always has to try to clean and blah, blah, blah. It says that soon she starts hearing noises behind a locked door, noises that sound remarkably like a human voice calling out for help. Though even Javier lives alone and never has visitors, Harry knows that not asking questions is a vital part of working at this house. But she soon finds the sinister house may be home to secrets that she can't ignore. So, interesting. Ooh, spooky. Will I be able to sleep at night? I don't know. Those are all of the books that I'm really excited to read um, in the next few months. Like I said, there's not a ton, which I'm not that mad about because that makes my TBR somewhat reasonable and I can focus on all the physical books I already have which is a lot. If you have any books that you're really excited for that are coming out in the next three months, please leave them in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.